Danielle, take one mark. Meditation helped me acknowledge these negative and, and positive, but negative mostly. And I used to just not even acknowledge it. You know, I would just push it aside and just keep going. And because of the childhood trauma that I experienced, I was always defending myself. And any type of negative, negative things would come up. I would just brush it aside and just keep going. And that's what I thought was the right way to go about it. But no, it's not. So it's really acknowledging it and, and then going from there. I mean, the next step is basically treatment. Acknowledging it is, is, is a huge, huge step. And I think it takes a lot of courage to do that. My, my son, when he acknowledged and he, he embraces it, basically, that um, he, he made a huge step and I respect him so much, you know, for doing that. And I appreciate, you know, I'm so grateful for him for doing that. That is where where the I think the road to recovery really starts. I mean of course it follows with other things like I talk about mental health all the time now. <laughs> and I talk about it with my husband now, you know, I didn't before. And so that has helped him, I think. And our relationship has really gotten so much better um, than before because now we're able to talk and not just run away. You know how people, when they have certain stress, you know, you either uh, fight or flight, right? Or you freeze. And I was more like a fighter or I would, or I would flight, one or the other, but I would not acknowledge it. Um, so I think that was, was a, a big turning point and and then, of course, the combination of everything, you know, uh, NAMI, the therapy, and, um, and just the people. The people are so important to share. And, you know, you, you, you share your experiences and your hope. You, you share the hope. And so the Thousand Cranes, that's what it did, um, actually, because I, I do these uh, talks like every um, twice a month. Uh, I do these talks in, in, and, I, and I did it in Japanese and I'm looking, I talk to, I have like special guest speakers who talk about their struggles and how do they overcome that. People with schizophrenia, um, bipolar, anxiety, you know, this, all these different community from Korean, uh, Chinese and, you know, different communities. So emphasizing on the, on the Asian American. We share a lot of the common like cultural uh, barriers to recovery, but we also, we're very, very different. I mean, even in the API community, there's like a hundred different languages, you know? So you can imagine how many different um, types of culture that we have. Everybody is very different. We all have our own subculture. So you can't lump sum everybody and say, oh, they're Asian, so this, th they're that way. You know, no, it doesn't work that way. That's why I, I talk about cultural humility, you know, because that's empathy and looking at each person as an individual and having their own subcultures. That's what I think is the key. You know, for one, I know the Japanese culture the best out of all the Asian American uh, cultures. Personally, you know, it has a deep meaning for me and um, and using the thousand cranes, the thousand origami cranes was something that I thought that um, is it's a group, you know, it's a it's a group mentality type of thing, but it's a it's also seen as to unify and to collectively uh, work towards um, hope and recovery. And I saw that uh, many um, Asian um, Asian American communities they they also see the symbol of the origami crane as a symbol of hope uh, and recovery. So the thousand cranes was was something that was perfect, you know, that for something like that. So I think that um, if you're experiencing like feelings of um, anger or you see yourself like 
distancing yourself from others or not trusting people and things like that, then it could be, you know, suppression. You're, you're suppressing something. Um, it could be trauma um, that I never really thought of, but um, if, you, if you're experiencing that and you're starting to see that it's affecting your relationships, you know, your family or your marriage or your kids, relationships, this is what I did. I, I just decided that I needed to seek treatment, but it, it's, of course, it's very difficult to find the right therapist, you know. The therapist is, is like your hairdresser. I went through a number of therapists and I finally found one. Keep trying because you know what? It really makes a huge difference. My relationship with my husband has actually, in the 35 years that, or almost 35 years that we've been together, uh, it's never been this good, you know? It's amazing. I think with my kids too.